Hey guys, it's X and Shadow, and welcome back to Let's Play Banjo Tooie. In the last part, we went through the Mayan Temple kickball games, and in this part, we are going to finish up our exploration of Mayhem Temple, meaning that we're going to get everything that we can get on our first run through. Now, this doesn't mean that we 100% the area. Now, we're going to have to come back for a second visit, and actually more visits after that, but that's not for, um, that's not for a completionist's sake, that's for extra stuff. So, you can clear out everything that you need to get in the game in two visits for Mayhem Temple. It's the first level, so they, so they make it pretty easy on you. Actually, if you want to just go straight to the second level, you don't even need to get most of the Jiggies in Mayhem Temple. You start off with one Jiggy at the beginning of the game, you know, you get that one from King Jingling. However, once you unlock Mayhem Temple, um, uh, in Jiggy Wiggy's Temple, in order to unlock the next level, you have to get, uh, you only need to get four Jiggies, meaning after you get three Jiggies in this level, you can just move on to the next level and completely ignore everything else here. However, I just like to do everything all at once. Just because, you know, it's easier to do everything all in one go as opposed to making multiple trips and stuff like that, you know? So, anyway, um, if you've played GoldenEye, GoldenEye for the N64, this might look a little bit familiar. And if you've played only the first Banjo-Kazooie game, you might be thinking, what the heck, first person segment, what? Anyhow, um... One of the abilities that you can get in this uh, level is called, uh, I don't remember its uh, specific name, but it's an ability that lets you do this first person mode. Uh, you have to get that ability before you can come in here. And if I remember correctly, you can get it pretty easily just by climbing up some vines and ledges near the entrance of the level. However, um, these first person sections are a new addition to the series. Uh, this is the first, and if I remember correctly, only time that you can see that you'll find them in the in the series. I don't know if they have anything like this in um, in Nuts and Bolts. I haven't played that one. And if you've played GoldenEye, the game it c controls pretty much exactly the same. You know, you uh, use the s the C stick to strafe, R button to aim, etc., etc. It controls pretty much exactly the same. So th th these are just little mini maze segments. Um, and I think that they do an okay job of breaking up the pace, but if I said that I really enjoyed these segments, I would be lying out my ass, because honestly, the first person segments are probably the weakest aspect of Banjo-Tooie. Um, I'll, I'll list off some positives first. Um, this is the- these sections of the game run smoother than any other part. Meaning, you see right here where it's like 60. 30 to 60 frames per second, you know, it's nice and smooth and consistent and all that. Yeah, this is about the smoothest that the game will ever run. For whatever reason, this runs really, really great, but everything else tends to chug a little bit, and while I've played this game enough not to mind all that much, you know, it, um, it's still sort of jarring when you see how smoothly it can run here, but then you see how, uh, uh, how sort of jagged it is everywhere else. Anyway, the goal of this uh, first first-person shooter segment is pretty simple. You need to find enough of these uh, relic statues in order to unlock two doors. There's the slightly sacred chamber, which we are going in right now. And once you go in there, you'll, it'll just pretty much be a free jiggy. So, you know, you can just grab that and move on. Nothing really hard about that. Um, however, there's the really sacred chamber, which you need to, which you unlock by collecting 20 statues. So, you need to find all those. I'm pretty sure there are more than 20 statues hidden about the level, so you don't have to worry too hard about um, about finding all of them. But th there's still the occasional one that will um, that you'll miss. Uh, so it's, it'll be like hidden in some corner, and since you get lost easily, because you know it's a first-person section with no map, so of course you're gonna get lost at some point, right? So yeah, I wouldn't blame, I wouldn't uh, really judge you too hardly if you don't enjoy this section. I honestly, I don't. Like, I don't hate these first-person sections, but they're uh, pretty easily the weakest aspect of the game. Now, another um, thing that you have to remember about this first-person section, and this is the only time they do this in a first-person se section, for the record. Um, there's a Jinjo in here. Other first-person sections, mostly just because they're timed, uh, they don't have stuff like Jinjos or Cheeto pages. This is the only instance where there's something other than um, the uh, in 
the something other than the a mission specific collectible in this in a mission you know that's the only time where there'll be a jinjo in one of these first person sections and honestly there aren't really all that many of them there's really only three um there's really only three major ones there's a couple of like little mini games that have you go into first person mode but those are all like shoot the target sort of situations there are really only three sections where you actually have to explore a large area and find things and so thankfully they're, they're spread out they're not too they're really not that bad and you don't have to deal with them that often and and thankfully they can contr the control is uh, pretty good even though it this is an n64 game the control has held up pretty decently i'd say it, it, it's held up about as decently as goldeneye has and while goldeneye definitely um hasn't held up visually and i don't think musically either i think goldeneye's soundtrack is just sort of meh um but you know goldeneye n64 still plays pretty okay in sort of an archaic fun sort of way and seeing as this is a lot more slow paced than an action game like goldeneye you know i don't really mind it all that uh, that much i think it's a i think it works for what it's trying to do but it doesn't do any more than that if that makes any sense like um if their goal here was change in pace they achieved a change in pace. It doesn't piss me off too bad, so it is a success. Not an astounding success, but a success nonetheless. So, here we have Target San, who is the first major boss of Banjo to me. He's not too bad. He's definitely not the easiest boss in the game, though. A lot of a couple of the later bosses are a lot uh, harder, are a lot easier than him. But he's really not too bad as long as you know that you can use the C buttons to strafe left and right without changing your uh, uh, without changing your uh, direction. Uh, whenever he starts shooting stuff at you, dodge using the C buttons and not by uh, using the control stick. It's a lot easier to keep your aim focused on him when you're sort of strafing as opposed to like zigzagging around trying to use the uh, control trying to use the control stick. Also remember that these uh, pillars will block dart shots up for a certain amount of time, so it's good to have cover that way. However, thankfully, it's not like this place is uh, covered with chest high walls. You know, there's a couple of them, they can help, but they break down relatively quickly, so don't, try not to rely on them too much. You're better off uh, trying to rely on dodging rather than uh, hiding behind a wall, because you can't easily shoot over the wall. You know, you've got to. You gotta keep your eye on the enemies, you gotta keep your eye on the darts. Uh, move fast, but as long as you... Uh, for a while, this boss actually did give me quite a lot of tr trouble. But all you have to remember is that you have to use the C buttons to dodge, and then this boss fight becomes a heck of a lot easier. Also note that these enemies that you're killing, they occasionally do drop health. So you should have more than enough, um, more than enough health bar to take care of this boss, no sweat. Now, at the very end of the boss fight, he'll do his ancient self-destruct or whatever, but if you hide behind one of the chest-high walls, you're, you can't get hurt by it, so just do that and then you'll be fine. But with that, we have gotten 9 out of the 10 Jiggies in a Mayhem Temple, meaning that we are set for the time being. You can leave this uh, area whenever you want, and then you're going to want to come back later because there is a few last things that you want to pick up. Uh, we've gotten every single honeycomb piece, we've gotten every single Cheeto page, we've gotten all the Jinjos, and we've gotten all of Jam Jar's moves. Usually you can get, uh, usually you can't clear out everything in a level, um, the first time you play through it. Uh, you can clear out some categories on one run through, like you can always get all of Jam Jar's moves on one run through. Uh, you can usually get most, if not all, of the Jinjos, um, uh, the majority of the Cheeto pages, but most of the time when it comes to Jiggies, which are the most important collectible, you're not going to be able to get all of those on one run through. You're going to have to, uh, you're going to have to backtrack to get all the Jiggies in nearly every single level of the game. Minus the last two, but that's just because at that point you pretty much have all of your abilities anyway, so there's not a whole lot of backtracking uh, required there. Thankfully, uh, the thankfully when you know where you're going, the door to the boss and the exit and entrance of the of this uh, little uh, first-person shooting section are pretty close, so you don't have to worry too much about finding your way back. Also, uh, landing in water completely negates falling damage, so you can just shortcut your way past back, uh, back to the entrance of the level that way. But anyway, next time we're going to be doing some cleanup in Spiral Mountain Mayhem Temple and getting a sneak peek at the next level. I am X in Shadow, and I'll see you guys.